just spent five minutes watching Transformers videos, Optimus Prime, Autobots, roll out. I love Transformers. We are here. We are waiting. So good. Love Transformers. The movies I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe I love the first couple. I don't know that the rest of them are much chop after that. But. Roll out. Hello, Timbo. Oh, I better get this camera action sorted, eh? Frog Jim, hello there, champion. actually know what this chick is holding. Is it a... I don't know. What is it supposed to be? Is it a flaming bird or something? Yeah, it looks like wings, but... I don't know what it does to make you cry but I'll be there to make you smile I don't need a fancy car To get to you I'd walk a thousand miles But my love is all I have to give Without you I don't think I can live I wish I could give the world to you. Haha. <laughs> ah, uh, thank you, Yarn. And thank you to everyone for your wonderful support of this channel. As infrequent and irregular as it is. <laughs> Hola, uh, buenas noches, no, buenos dias. It's morning in Spain right now. España. There's, there's something that, I, like, we, we genuinely undervalue how incredible the internet is and how, like, our ability to connect with people. Like, here we are, sitting down, one assumes painting some models, hopefully. It's not just me painting models, but if it is just me, that's fine. And we've got people from all over the world... able to tune in and have a chat you know, we have J 
Generally Topolis joins from Seattle. We have Tui joining from Denmark, Natalia from Poland. You know, it's just a crazy, crazy thing that we get to share. And even just as simple as young Andrew and I living 1500 kilometers away in Brisbane and Melbourne. The fact that we get to just hang out and have a chat, pretty incredible, I think. Unfortunately, friends, the worst has happened. Uh, Shannon Knoll has taken on a new gig with with Jetstar. The likelihood that we're going to get Nolsey for the Crimson Brush is significantly reduced. It's a real shame. You know, we had high hopes this year of getting Nolsey along. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. So, so have to make do with me. Uh, so this this project we, we did very little work on it uh, yesterday, and by very little I mean I think I I closed up my um, stream yesterday and then went straight on to the rest of my day, and so I don't think I did any more painting yesterday at all. And then um, I had a very full day at work, so this is still just floating on. Uh, just over two hours work so I think we're making some pretty reasonable headway hey Cujo uh, yeah so two hours work so we'll, we'll probably figure out what it's gonna look it's not a humble brag mate it's a it's a overt brag Look, I don't know how much more overt I can be. I'm significantly faster than you. Yes, Cujo, one of the greats. We're very blessed to have... Actually, I think Cujo's in Scotland as well. So there's another place on the world. Is that right, Cujo? You're in Scotland? There you go. We've got people all over the world connected thanks to the internet. We don't appreciate that marvel often enough, I would say.
<laughs> well, my apologies for saying you are Spanish. I guess one of the downsides of everyone being so connected is it's easier to get things wrong. I think as long as we go in with open hearts trying to do our best to not be a dickhead everything will be okay <laughs> Thank you, mate. Oh, what event was there, Cooch? event was it Frog Jim? Na 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 what I've done Oh I'm mad What you did style Wales is a bit of a hike Wales is a bit of a hike for someone in Scotland It'd be about ten hours did you just fly? You should try and get to some shows, Cooch. Aside from the fact that you have to talk to people, they're pretty they're pretty good, you know. Uh, that's two very good people. I know both of those two quite well. Did did Albert bring any of his stuff to show off? Did you get a chance to see any of his stuff? The guy's a fucking freak. Like, seriously. And it's not even... Yeah, right. It's not even uh, it's not even the technical stuff. Like you look at it and you go, yeah, that's I can understand how you did that. Like there's nothing mind blogging about it. But what what gets your brain is how persistent he is. 
that he can just keep going. <laughs> just keep going over and over again. That's what my girlfriend thinks about me. <laughs> One wishes. So it's interesting to be back painting display stuff. I don't feel like I've done anything really display oriented for a little while. I suppose the dwarves count, but they felt pretty straightforward. This feels like a much more complex figure. Wonder why that is. Wonder why I feel that way. done an amazing gap filling job there. Amazing! Hello there Mini Man sir. Oh holy night Stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Yes, the kitty cat's traveling all right so far. Long may the world sing and bear the finding. It has definitely been a year of green. Uh, now if we go back and look at my years, I definitely had a red year. Uh, this has been the year of green. And I feel like next year, we move into the year of purple. The year of purple feels like. the magenta purple era. Me too, I love love purple.
Uh, yes, so hopefully young Andrew's going to join us tonight at some point. Um, let's go have a look actually and see if he's joining us. I'm doing such a great job on reels at the moment, friends. Like, I'm just killing it on the reels front. It's just, like, really good. Really good stuff. Like, if you want any social media tips on how to grow your social media presence, uh, you know, using reels, I am your guy. No, no, nothing at all. Oh, is that skin as well? Am I fucked up? I have to. What a fucking idiot you are sometimes, don't I? Mum used to call me, or oh, you silly duffer. <laughs> Good egg, my mum. Yeah, I did. I got it right on the other side. I've got a few, got a few projects to work on in the next little while. Like I've got all my little Kingdom Death pin-up girls and a few new bits and pieces coming. But this is this has been a, a fine little foray back into uh, display painting, and, and it's made me feel uh, excited, excited about. Um, Dipping my feet back in the water a little bit. I did, yeah, I did. Unfortunately, um, I spent about four grand, which is which is absolutely outrageous decision making for me. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like I can justify it to myself because it's like I have the. I have the financial capacity to do so now and I don't know that I will have in the future so that's how I justify it <laughs> I basically I, I was holding off I, I had a choice about doing it two years ago and I decided not to and I don't regret that decision um, so, felt like the right time. Some of that money may may never fucking eventuate, right? But if I look at how much money I have invested into Kingdom Death versus how many games I've played, um, the cost benefit analysis still is extremely in Kingdom Death's favour versus some of the other expenses that I've invested in and uh, and when I look at my returns on those things I did I did go ham actually I was like fucking go let's go
definitely need some dark sea blue, I think. Is it back Mate, with the amount of money that a lot of people invested in that game, I think they're doing okay, but there would not be many people that own Kingdom Death that have experienced it in the way that I have. And I don't say that with arrogance, although I have been known to speak with arrogance at times. Hello, Jared, but I have, I have painted every model to a relatively high standard. There would not be a, there would be a percentage of the player base that could not say that. I have played through basically every piece of content that is released with the exception of one campaign and I have recorded a large number of those playthroughs like I have absolutely gotten value from the money that I've invested into that game. Oh, is that them boobies? It is them boobies. Nice. So yeah, it was a it was a choice that I made to go, yep. That'll, that'll give me uh, value for many, many years to come. It will give me models to paint. And by investing in it now, I feel like I'm setting my next few years up with something to look forward to. And given that I have less security uh, right now in my job, um, having that locked and loaded feels okay. I have an apple. I have a pen. Ah, pineapple pen. Haha. <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't uh, wasn't trying to convince you. I was trying to convince myself. <laughs> nah, no, I feel good. It was uh, it was the right time, and I'm in a position that I can afford to do so for the moment. And the other thing that I do, the other thing to keep in mind about miniatures, and this is also a very ego-driven uh, thought, so hold yourself. Um, any miniature I buy, I believe I can sell in the future for a profit. So there's an, there's an ego piece to me that's like, yeah, miniatures, that's fine. I can buy that. I can sell that at any point. If I couldn't sell my Kingdom Death collection for 10 plus grand, I would be absolutely shocked, if not more. Like, I would have spent, would have spent maybe 6 grand on it. If I couldn't get close to 15, I'd be surprised. I'm not saying it'd be easy, it'd be an easy sale, like I'm not be like, well, if I can put my kingdom death up and boom, it's gone, but there is a very broad player base that um, that is very dedicated to that game. Oh, my God, Jared. I've talked about it before, but go and have a look at the Kickstarter. I'll put the link, I'll give you the link right now. 
just just have a think about this. If you were to say, you know, what is what is the biggest Kickstarter? What's the highest amount of money you've seen on a Kickstarter raised for a board game? Yeah, that amount. Uh, it is easily um, like it would it would probably outstrip some of the the smaller games that are out there in terms of the player base like you know your your marble crisis protocols your shatter points it would easily have a player base to rival those in terms of people that have bought it Yeah, they've definitely struggled with. They've struggled with a lot of things. One of one of the absolute truths of this hobby, this industry, creators in general, I guess, is that you have people that are great at ideas, and then you have people that are great at organisation. And it's very, very, very uncommon for those two people to exist in the same body. <laughs> um, you know, most of the time, people that are creative uh, just just aren't good at logistics and and organising things. Um, you know, it's just it's completely different skill sets, completely different sides of the brain. And so you have this guy who's just had this idea that he's passionate about, that he's excited about. I want to make this cool game with dick monsters, and it's going to be great. And he's just fucking been wildly successful. <laughs> like, in your wildest dreams, would you ever think that you could raise $12 million, US by the way, uh, on a board game? And that, that, that people would be frothing it. Frothing it so hard that they're like, I need more dick monsters. Please. So he, he got himself into a bind. Um, and, and because, again, it comes back to the creative brain, like he's, he just goes gangbusters on ideas. He's like, oh, I've got a cool idea, I'm going to do this. And he's also a, a person who has a pretty clear vision about what he wants the game to be. And so you, you've got, and these are all good qualities, right? But they are compounded by um, <clears throat> his inability to manage the timelines of his project so to give you an, a, an example and again I've talked about King of Death all the time I could talk about it for hours but there was a there was a uh, expansion that was touted in that Kickstarter in 2016 by the way that Kickstarter was uh, called the Gambler's Chest and it was initially pitched as hey we just want to we've got some cool sculpts we want to release these sculpts it'll just be a box of extra sculpts and maybe we'll put in some like rules to use those extra sculpts great 50 bucks 50 bucks to buy yourself the gambler's chest make it happen that expansion over the next six years seven years went from being a 50 dollar box to now retailing for 450 it went from having 20 or 30 models to having nearly a hundred uh, it had a full campaign and a full structural change of the game and he just and he gave it to everyone who paid 50 bucks for it <laughs> for 400 bucks he's just like yep no this is this is my fault this is not everyone's fault I just got really excited about all these things cool man so that's the type of that's the type of project organizer is. He's not. He's genuinely not in it for the money. Like he's not sitting there going, "I'm here to count my pennies and get the game out to you." It's a full creative pursuit for him, and he's like inspired to do 
cool ideas and inspired to, um, you know, churn out his masterpiece. And I, yeah, I love the guy for it. I think it's incredible. Kudos for believing in your vision. But it's it's out there. There's no doubt about that. So yeah, he, he found himself continually adding content and not really knuckling down. You know, most people expect Kickstarters to go, um, you know, a few, few months overdue, sometimes a year or two is sort of expected, or maybe not, maybe not accepted, but um, you get away with it. Uh, he, he was four years late and he was probably pretty close and then COVID hit and with everything that happened with shipping and stuff I would say it's fair to say that he just went yeah I can't afford to lose that much money on shipping so I'm just going to hold wait until this shit dies down and send it and he's, he's, he's in that position where he's damned if he does and he's damned if he, start, if he doesn't because if he doesn't release if he holds on to it people blow up him for not having released the project but if he if he sends it out and he goes bankrupt well no one gets their shit so keeping people unhappy and in the dark is probably the right call but again there's a lot of nuance to the conversation you know if he wasn't fucking late in the first place then maybe COVID doesn't have the impact but there's very few people that have received their product that they paid $50 for and gone, yeah, I'm unhappy that I had to wait this period of time. He does some awesome stuff. Leave that, Meadow. Hey. Hey, leave that. Lux and I had a heated conversation on this very stream a few months ago where I said that Lucas deserves to be in the top 10 painters in the world because of how unique and recognisable his work is. And that got us into a discussion about if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Having a recognisable style etc etc <clears throat> yeah it is extremely vibrant and I would say he's uh, one of the few no maybe that's I don't want to say something and then be absolutely bullshitting but the photos that you see on the internet are very much true to what it feels like when you see them on the table and that's not always the case is he has he taken me over the dog well he's got to be in the top 10 then in the world give it to him now <laughs> you really you really do um get a better appreciation for him once you see his stuff I think like I, I remember seeing the um, the dude on the bison or whatever animal it was 
It was wild. Absolutely wild. I haven't uploaded in there in a while, actually. Probably about a year. I feel like I've lost the ability to take good photos that are actually representative of my work, so... Stop. Stopped uploading. Uh, I think I do, but I don't think it scored very well. Like, most of the stuff I've uploaded has either been, uh, like, failed to get enough votes, or just barely gotten out of the silver territory, so... I say... Practice what I preach. It doesn't really matter. It is not a... It is a social EP measuring competition. And it's okay. But I am unhappy. You're a smarter man than most, Cooch. Uh, it's, it is, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's friendly to a lot of stuff. What, what lets it down is that there's no, so you're, you're actively better off, um, not getting a vote than you are getting a bronze or a silver. And so there will be people on there that vote what I would say is fairly and be like, hey, this is, you know, this is a really good silver level entry. I'm going to vote you silver. And then people turn around and go, well, that's actually damaging my average. So I would have preferred you gave me no vote. Some people get upset by that, <laughs> that they get stuff. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's tactical, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't think that. I would just think it's people people have different values, right? Like how do you determine a gold? By by allowing and I'll I'll sort of be a little bit probably controversial here. There was a period where it was an invite only. And when it was invite only, you know, if you got a silver from, from Roman, no, the votes aren't public unless you pay. If you got a silver from Roman, like, that was a big deal. Like, he was, you know, and because it was um, invite only, there would be less entries coming through on a day-to-day -day basis, which meant that most of the time, you'd get a lot more votes on average. So if you actually got <clears throat> if you actually got a you know a gold on there because of the quality of painters that were voting and um, the quality of work that it was up against, and you know, that was a real achievement. And it really it felt like it meant something. And then they opened it up to anyone could join and sign up. Uh, which is fine and dandy, but what happened then is you'd get 10 guys who'd vote on everything, and then they'd be like, hey, go and vote on my stuff, because I voted for all yours, and if you didn't give them a gold, then in future they would not give you a gold, uh, even if their work was not representative of it, and so it became very much a popularity contest, as opposed to a quality of work contest. And again, um, there's there's downsides to the clickiness as well. So I'm not saying that the previous system was without flaw. Um, you know, to be able to even get your work onto that website, you needed to have friends that would that would get you an invite, um, or or be showing your work at a level where someone was like, "Hey, I'm going to get you an invite to Putty and Paint," and you'd be like, "Hell yeah!" So, not without flaws, 
but a goal back then really meant something. Whereas now, yeah. Not so much. But yeah, if you if you pop something up there now and you get a gold, yeah, that's awesome. Um, if you are a a premium member or or whatever it is, and and I was for quite a while. Um, yeah, you can actually see who gave you votes and what that what votes they gave you. And what I found was that that actually started to um, influence me in a negative way. I was like, oh my god, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really want to know if someone's given me a bronze because. that felt like an attack <laughs> and it's not although there are people who literally go on there and, and just vote down vote people basically and there's one guy in particular who, who does it on purpose to, to be upsetting um, however when I got a gold vote from that guy fuck it was satisfying fuck it was satisfying <clears throat> anyway it's a a website owned by people and those people are entitled to thanks bucks those people are entitled to operate their website however they choose and for them my guess is they reached a point where they were like, we're paying hosting costs and all this sort of stuff and we're getting nothing out of it. Let's open it up and let's give people the ability to pay us money. And a lot of people did so. And I imagine it's gone from being a time sink to a moderately profitable enterprise. So, good luck to them. There's, there, there is actually no problems. Like there is actually no problems with that system, um, because it's it's the same as every uh, public voted system. If you got enough friends, you win. So that just that's what the that's what Putty and Paint has become, or is about, is having enough friends and the the other sorry. The other part to the site, which is um, not necessarily detrimental, not necessarily a bad thing, but most people don't go on there and, and, and click through all of the recent things that have been uploaded and vote on them. Most people don't do that. Uh, most people will click on the front page and they'll be like, oh, that's a cool piece. I'm going to go click on that and vote on it. And so, if your piece is able to get into the popular section uh, on the first page, you are more likely to get more votes. Now, how you get on the popular section is if you have a number of gold votes in a short period of time. And we're talking like, you know, six hours or something. So the time that you release it, the amount of votes that it gets in, a, in its initial um, upload time, etc., all relevant to its eventual success. And that's why you often see people posting Facebook posts saying, hey, I just uploaded this picture to Putty and Paint because they know that if they get an influx of people voting on their stuff, it's more likely to float up to the front page, which means it's more likely to get more votes, which means it's more likely to finish on it, you know, a reasonable score. It's a maths based system. Which means I was able to figure out the maths. <laughs> and how best to rot the system.
That's it. That is absolutely it. Now you may have just, I have sculpted hair before, yes. You may have taken my little rant there to mean that I dislike putty and paint. I do not. I love it. I think it's a great showcase of, um, of works and I think it's the best system that we've seen so far. Let me, let me give you an actual practical um, example of fur. So you need a, you need a tool like this one. It's actually pretty easy. You can do it in two ways. Um, so I use this this bobby, but I've got a thinner one as well, my white one. But I, I don't like a straight line one. This is a dental tool, by the way. So um, most dentists will actually chuck these out. You can actually get one. I have a dentist who's a friend. Where's my white one? So this one is just a, actually bent that. Uh, it's just like a pin. So you can do it with a pin, but I find that when it's bent, it's easier. So imagine that you get a big chunk of paint, fur, rather, clump here, right? So this is just a clump. Uh, what you want to do is pull it out like this. And you just want to like go side to side. Uh, imagine that you've got like little sections like this. So you don't. You actually just have one clump. But imagine that you're putting your line in there, and then just sort of drag it down. And you always, always, always want to work from the top down. So when you, when you do that little section there, what it does is it creates a little gap in this area here. Uh, maybe I should just I can do a little bit. I'll do it in blue tack, so that way I don't have to mix up some putty and waste it. It's one of those. It's one of those things that uh, is actually really easy, but you sort of have to uh, yeah. So just grab it like a section, and then just tease it down like that. And this is obviously not the uh, best material to do it with, but when you tease it down like that, you'll, you'll end up with little little clumps. And by pushing down like this, you then create that extra layer underneath. 
this is sort of a bit sticky but and so once you've got that basic structure right that's when you can um, you know soften with a brush depending on which which thing you're working and then you can again just sort of add your little strokes if you want to if you want to have that sort of stuff you can you can go in and add you know smaller bits over the top of that um, or you can yeah so it's just the key is flat piece separate and then drag down like that again natural variation is actually what you want you want a little bit of irregularity actually one of the easiest things to do chainmail is another easy one believe it or not I'll show you chainmail while we're here again specific tool makes it easier a uh, little ball so with chainmail you sort of get a smooth surface and then you go starting from the bottom so you always push in one direction and then you go the opposite direction and then you go this direction And by pushing in that direction, you tend to get um, the that look of um, links because these are all in one sort of angle, and then these are all in the other angle, and these are all in, the, in one angle. All right. So by by going up down like that, you get. Yeah, by going across and then the other way and then the other way you get that sort of interlocking look and again uh, it's not really ideal with blue tack but you get a you get a sense of that look there you go My sculpting mentor was a lovely man by the name of Glenn Lamprecht. Who was one of the best miniature painters that Australia has ever <laughs> produced. Sculpting dick monsters is out of my purview of uh, expertise, I'm afraid. done a fair bit of sculpting in my time like mostly mostly just to add bits and pieces to a project but I was pretty keen on doing a full sculpt for a while um, and then digital sculpting became more of a thing and the idea sort of lessened in enthusiasm <laughs> I still like to do it. is going to miss most of the show. What a guy. It's like, yeah, Dan, let's do Party Monday. Can't wait. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> you 
You relax, piece of shit. An hour and four minutes, you peanut. Like, you can't even use the excuse that um, I start too late for him. Like, he's an hour ahead of me. <laughs> I know, mate. I know. Most of the fans appreciate that. with your drivel for a significantly shorter period of time. That is a pretty good uh, entrance theme to have, I've got to tell you. I might do that. is Oh, love The Undertaker. Where's his theme song? Val Venus. <laughs> Mick Foley. G'day Covert Madness, it's going well, we're painting this chick. What is, uh, what is Triple H entrance, is it? No chance, that's what you got. Is, it, is that Triple H?
Loved wrestling. Vince McMahon, that's what it was. No chance in hell! <laughs> Here, I'll zoom it out so you can see how it's actually looking. Doom, 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 doom. Bam. No chance! No chance in hell! What are you calling me for? <laughs> Spam calls. G'day Fabian from Germany. Uh, G'day Fabian from Germany. Shit fucks, you need to put your things on, mate. Welcome, buddy. Hello, mate. <laughs> oh, hello, mate. Oh, yeah, we're going to do the glass smash for you, mate. Ready? Hang nah, on. mate. That's not my intro. What's your intro? Give me the brood. Give me the brood's intro, mate. Give me that deep gothic intro. <laughs> Let me have a little bit Good one. I like that. That was good. Glad we did that. What am I doing? Uh, what's happening, mate? You traveling okay? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm all right. About ready to um to pick up some uh some family. Got some family out from um from the UK very soon. A couple of days, so it's gonna be good fun. So. Nice, uh, nice temperature for it, hey. Yeah, it's 31 today. Yeah, wow. hot. How are you guys up there? Hot as balls. Hot as balls. Ball mm -hmm. soup. Ball soup. Yeah. Why don't you take your pants off, sir? My balls. Crimson looms, my friend. It does. It does indeed. We're getting very close. Um, feeling positive about it, actually. Feel like we've got a lot of good stuff ahead. Um, a lot of momentum. Yeah. Our, uh, I, I believe that our uh, social media presence. Yeah, the socials the socials is going very well. Yes. Very strong. Um, and the social media director is performing it very well. Yes, and part of the reason why it's going this well is that I am not the one doing it. This is why you've employed a social media director. I have indeed, and we use the term employed very loosely. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Employed, favor, please help, help any of those. <laughs> um, to to not throw our social media director under the bus too much though, but every time said social media director spells something wrong, it really just it really rustles my jimmies. Like I can't I can't express to you how much it hurts me. Am yeah, I'm, but it probably hurts you more that you don't really want to say anything as well. You're like damn. Yeah, people think this is me. <laughs> People think this is me. Yeah. <laughs> so who's who's along for the ride tonight? Who's in chat? Let me have a look. Fabian, greetings from Germany. Hello, Fabian. Guten Morgen. Jimbo. What's Mini Man? So what are you doing awake? Man? I know. I know. Jimbo. He's a lunatic. Should he be asleep right now? Yeah, it's probably like four AM for him. It's all right. Sleep when you're dead, mate. Agreed. 
It's almost 5 a.m. You, you got work the next day, mate, or are you just, you know, you got a raw dog two hours and then into a full day shit? That's, uh, that's a young man's game. Yeah, nice, that's fine. Yeah, you're what else is the news, my friend? What's been going on? You've recovered now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bit of COVID's last week, a bit of, uh... There's crack too, yeah? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how was that, how was that ride, mate? Look, it was okay. It was, uh... It was just a... Just a bit of, bit of, uh, difficulty with, you know, existence. So, aside from yeah. that, it was all fine. No, it was it was it was okay. But you know what what it what it did was um uh just remind me how much I enjoy painting because the the the, the, the one of the fun things about painting is like any time you you can't do it. Yeah. Like when you actually physically can't. Which that's is when you've been stopped from doing it. That is when you want to do it the most. So that's I was probably life lesson there though, isn't yeah. it? It is. Not just painting and stuff. It's about everything, isn't it? Yeah. So I was sitting there last week going, gosh, I really would like to paint. I just don't feel up to it. So, yeah. Oh, it is what it is. You're back now. I am, yes, I am. Are you feeling like I'm going to turn pistachio into blonde hair? It's a blonde old head that's going grey. I love pistachio. You know, it's one of my all-time favourite colours. Yeah. I feel like I need to add some to this piece, actually. You can probably do a lot with pistachio, can't you? I do. I use it on reds. I use it on greens. Use it on browns. It's just pistachio. good. Pistachio. Yeah. So what have you signed me up for, mate? What What have... What have we got coming out in the next few weeks? What is this? So there'll be a few people in the chat that were here when this this um, this idea sort of just came about, which was um, Tui and Natalia were just going ham on uh, on competition, particularly European competition and the division and historical and things. Um, yeah. From a cultural standpoint, and they were just lighting it up, and I was loving it. And I was like, this is, this is, you know, I haven't jumped into someone's stream, like, for, for quite a long time. So it's the first stream I jumped along to. And I was like, look, this is fantastic. And we were just chatting and hanging out. Um, and I was like, look, like, we should, um, we should do a, a stream together or something. It would be fun. And she's like, absolutely, it would be fun. I said, better yet, like, why don't we do one with, um, with two years up? And he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Because we've done the stream before with Dewey. Yep. So I thought, you know, well, this could be good. And Natalia's streaming times actually match up loosely with yours. You know yes. that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, with your Sunday morning. So that was in the back of my head. And then we got talking to it, uh, talking about it. We're like, yeah, let's do this. And then I was like, well, why don't we ask Trader Peoples to be involved in it? And Natalia was like, that's a pretty good idea. And then within seconds, she'd messaged you and I had set up a group chat. And that's, that's where it started. All right. When you say Natalia thought that was a very good idea, I'm sure what she was thinking in her head was, fuck Dano, fuck that guy. I don't want to be him to be a part of it. He sucks. And I can um, understand that perspective. Look, that, that might be your own self-speak going on there, mate. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think putting four people who are pretty opinionated in a room together uh, is, is uh, destined for greatness. Or a recipe for disaster, one of the two. Listen... We're not hosting uh, talk shows in front of millions of people, mate, so it's okay. <laughs> you know the same steering to the skid, don't you? <laughs> no, it does sound fun. Um, and, yeah, I, I I love Natalia's perspective on things, the passion. Love Tui's yeah. perspective on things, the passion. And uh, love your perspective on things, uh, the the passion and the wankitude. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a bit of fun. 
And so you'll, you'll bring your own unique take to it because you're a pretty opinionated guy. Don't even think that. Uh, uh, but you're also, uh, you're also pretty good at staying on target. Uh, you're a bit of Skywalker. Um, yeah. To that I use the so force. You do use the force. How you use it. <laughs> that's for another stream. But uh, <laughs> that's, for, that's, that's for, for Deno fans. Deno's oily fans. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought it could be could be good. We just have to figure out how we want to how we want to bring it together, and then um, just kick off. Because there's going to be no shortage of uh, of words spoken. It won't be a um, <laughs> me painting Jerry Springer. Why not, Kush? Good time, and you know we'll do one if it, if it works well and it's fun. People enjoy it. Um, then we'll do more. If not, then we try something. We learn from. Yep, I'm I'm on board. There'll be um there'll be some there'll be some value in it. I think. Uh, yeah. When do we start? <laughs> Um, well, I'll leave that for, for uh, cause Tui and I are the, the guest type, right? So we'll leave it for, I guess, in our group chat. I see, I see. Group. Now I know why Deno's been invited into the group. It's cause you need someone to organise it, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is. It's just get in a Discord, it's not that hard. Alright, uh, yeah, so in other you words... You two have time slots already. Yeah, I see. It's Deno, uh, you're so great, mate. We really want your opinion and your perspective. Oh, by the way... You've got three creatives. Can you please organise everything? Sure. <laughs> sure, champ. <laughs> don't, don't push me. Push a push pop. Don't push me. Push a push pop. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's good times. Oh, I need to get back to this. Uh, I I have no <laughs> no time for that to occur up here. Generally, uh, my water in my palate dries out before anything else happens, and then that means I don't have dried skin. I have f completely this dry paint. Yeah. yeah, everything dry. everything just disappears in a fucking heartbeat up here. Like all the paints that I was using yesterday yesterday morning about half of them are gone just cooked yeah what do you be, what what's what's taking your fancy mate what have you what have you you started putting paint to brush a little bit you brush uh, just a just a like an easy um, move move back in the space fast so the messenger from I think it's from Galapagos is it or is it from yeah, it's from Galapagos. So yeah. Really sure. um, so I think France painted this one at um, at the Guilty. Um, yeah. Caught my eye, so I was like, yeah, let's let's paint that. It's right in my wheelhouse, right? You know. Yep. Um, it's um. Hey, Jimbo. It's a oh, the man. Big friend of the stream, Jimothy. Much love for Jim. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's just a, a nice piece. Uh, it's simple in its design. It's probably only got one problem to solve, which is the hair. Yep. Um, I think I've been looking. You know, I'm not going to go too deep on my own personal stuff over the last little while, but <laughs> my journey had taken a turn, um, and uh, this is uh, this is going to be what I think helps me. Thank you, Clear Mr. Fish mind. Prince. Very much appreciated. Clear my mind and, um, and start the poem once again. Uh, it's really funny how, uh, how uh, self-speak works. So I was just, I, I had a free moment today and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write down every single thing I've painted this year because I think I've had a pretty bad year, <laughs> right? I've painted 97 models this year. <laughs> 20, 20 of them are display orientated. 
Yeah. And I have painted two full terrain sets too. Bad year for you, mate. <laughs> See, there's like, you know, and that sounds that sounds stupid, right? Like, but that's, you know, I'm not saying this to, to boast about how many models I've painted. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is that my mind wanted to tell me that I've underperformed and not not done what I what I should be doing, which is absolute bullshit. Has nothing to do with why I do this in the first, place. Um, and just is is shit that my head cooks up to get in my way. Uh, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of negative self talk. You're aware of that. Yes. Most of my most of my thought processes tend to be pretty much about how great I am, right? Um, but there is a part of me that that uh, feels like I I am not committing as much as I would like to, or delivering as much as I'd like to when it comes to painting, in terms of like the number of things that I paint. I feel like I've set myself you know, a standard or this is, this is what I am. I deliver 50 projects a year. Yeah. I don't, I deliver as many projects as I feel like. Um, yeah. Well, and also that your life allows what you dictate. Yeah. Um, I would say that there has been times in your life, but like, I'm here, but there's been times in your life in the last five years, if not longer, that have been perfect for that level of output. Yep. Like things have aligned. What's going on in life is aligned to, to go that way. Yeah. I don't think this year was like that for you. Not at all. Lots of other things going on. And it, it may not it may not be again for a while or, or, or yeah. fuck for all I know, ever. Um yeah. and so there's a there was a period where I think I would have been like, you're doing a shit job, you need to paint more. Um, you know, stop, stop wasting time, stop making excuses, get it done. Uh, but I, I have a lot more uh, compassion for myself now in the sense that I don't feel the need to uh, work to any agenda other than the one that adds the most joy and value to my life. So, and that's a, that's a, you know, adult, a mature adult realization that um, I don't owe anyone anything. Like I don't do this for anyone. And there's so many, there's so many times when people have been like, "Oh, why don't you, why don't you do this? Why don't you make money out of this? Why don't you sell this?" Blah blah blah. And it's like I, I don't want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just like painting cool models and playing games and having a good time. That's all I want out of this hobby. Yeah, I think during the last little while, I've um, I've found why I paint. Good. And it's quite different to that, um, and it's something that I'll talk about, like personally with you and, and our friends and our group friends. I probably at some point will talk about it on the stream, but I don't feel it necessary to talk about it right this moment. Good. Uh, so sorry, friends on the stream. It's not not a you thing. It's a me thing. Um, But yeah, it's uh, it feels quite empowering at the moment. So how long that will last, I don't. Know. Good. Hey, COVID. That's absolutely a wonderful thing to read, right? Um, for me, because there's times when I sit here and think to myself, why do I, why do I stream? Like, what's the point in doing this? What value am I adding to my own life? Um, and it's it's absolutely being able to hopefully positively inspire other people um, that is one of the reasons that I do this and so yeah to, to hear you say that that's inspired you to want to get up and just just do something you just you know that's great but if I can if I can reiterate the piece of advice um, that I just just shared or the lesson that I just shared just you know be okay <laughs> with with just enjoying it you know it doesn't have to there doesn't have to be a result or a goal other than just coming in and painting some cool models that's it just have fun it's your hobby and it is enjoy it 
to some it's more than that, and to some it's less, right? Yeah. But in the end, it's about figuring out what it what it is for you. Yeah. But there was there was this period of time, right? Uh, or or maybe that period of time is still now where you can't you can't just have something and be bad at it anymore. You know, yeah. it's like you, you've always got to be grinding. You've always yes. got to be, you know, like working towards something. The and prolific stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's... That's about, yeah. It's okay, to, it's okay to want to get good at something, right? There's no shame yeah. in that. And that's a great aspiration. And, you know, if, if, if you devoted your life to the, the art of painting and, and, and just did it to, to become the best painter you could be. Um, but... That doesn't that doesn't mean that you need to grind it and and have it be a job and have it be something that you despise just it's okay to be bad at something you know it's okay to not not be the best yeah. anyway I get uh, I get a little bit frustrated with the world sometimes. Because I do think we've we've moved away from doing things for joy, fun. Yeah, I also think um, there's, a, there's actually, it feels like there's a fairly distinct difference between, um, and, and this could just be my <laughs> I think between like there's almost like two types of creatives in miniature painting uh, two very distinct types I'm sure it's like lots lots more but I think there's a, the, the type that like as you said do this because it's cool and they want to paint cool miniatures and have and have fun doing that yeah and then I think there's um, another one that paint because they have to you know what I mean? Like, it's a part of who they are. Like, uh, so, like, I think I belong to the, the part that has to paint because it helps with lots of other things in my life. Mm, mm, okay. Um, so, I think that's a pretty big chunk, too. And I think it's like a Venn diagram, right? Like, so those two circles are sitting either side of each other. Yeah. And then where they intersect in the middle is like wanting to get good at something. Yeah. And that wanting to get good at something can tear people away from their primary motivations for what they do and become their primary motivation. Yep. And when that yep. happens, I think that's where people are at the highest danger of potentially losing why they do it in the first yep. place. Goal. Yeah, no, could th- th- that, could, no, that could be one of the most insightful things you've said, mate. The, the, the Venn diagram of, you know, why we do this. Um, there's there's got to be There's got to be a clear understanding of what your goal is when you sit down at the table. And, you know, we, we've talked about that a lot, right? Yeah. Is your goal to become the best possible painter that you can? If it is, that's okay. You know, that's an admirable goal. Like, let's look at Jared as an example. Absolutely given him, given the most of himself that he can to, to achieving that. And yeah. kudos to him because he's been willing to make those sacrifices to allow him to get there. Tremendous. But if your goal is is therapy, if if painting is a release, and and a and a break, and something that allows you peace in your life, to then also have that be something where you're driven to be better. Yeah. Those two things are not necessarily aligned, and if those two things are fighting against each other, that's when you'll reach that point of of probably unhappiness. Right. It's like critical mass, right? Yeah. Like, which I think I've gone through in the last four months. Um, yeah. So finding yeah. finding your why yeah. is uh, is a crucial part of it. There's a great uh, great video on the internet called "Start with Why" by Simon Sinek. Anyone who's interested in uh, a bit of personal leadership development, Simon Sinek does some I, great um, stuff. I do want to say though that. This, this is not an out to not practice what I preach when we sit in a room together and all talk. In all the way through this process, I've not actually stopped painting for longer than a couple of weeks where it's just not been applicable based on too much life events going on, right? 
So I've still sort of sat, I think we talked about this, in a holding pattern of paint. I've been painting lots of Star Wars Shadowpoint stuff, right? Yeah. With no um, expectation of growth. And it probably is, is like, at its base level, just enjoyable painting. Um, well, I'm, I'm so in the same, mate. I've, I've done Kingdom yeah. Death. I've done, you yeah, know, Kingdom board Death. games. and yeah. we, we are painters at our core. Like, we enjoy yes. painting. And we will paint, but it doesn't have to be with the end goal of X, Y, Z. It is to paint because that is the thing that we love and therapy and, and you know, just a part of our who we are. Very much so. So I think I would encourage anyone who's like watching tonight to sort of maybe ask themselves why. Um, and if your answer is just be fucking cons, then that's cool. Like that's and that answer feels right for you at the time. Then that's awesome. There's not. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. In it, but no. I think asking why can, um, in in particular to, to this, can really help you sort of identify what where you should be investing your time. Yep. Um, and how you should be going. And when you say investing your time, what you mean is, you know, your creative time. Yes. If your if your goal is to improve, then there's a different way to spend your time than if your goal is to enjoy painting or, you know, wh whatever. And again, I'm really interested to uh, hear more to some extent. You know, I, mean, I don't really care that much, but to hear more about what it is you found that ticks ticks for you because it's good to know yeah it, it, it really is it's, it's important to know I think. Um, uh, I can tell you what it's not it's not winning awards <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I have a very competitive nature um, and that has interfered with something that was not supposed to be competitive Yep, that's a that's a good and insightful uh, lesson for you. Yeah. Now that now that actually doesn't mean like I'm gonna stop competing or anything like that, right. It just means that I now know why, because I I will have to. In the uh, sorry. A better way to put it may be that um, uh, uh, in the lead up to competition, I will be better, better motivated and for the right reasons, which are not the competition itself. Um, so any like works or whatever that I take to a, a competition will just be reflections of me and, and my, you know, creative journey, like what I stories I'm going to tell or how I feel um, and that's fine if that's not enough to win awards that, that doesn't matter yeah that's a it's a good it's a good place to land I think uh, now that could all change like anything right like but for now that's what I'm thinking a little bit of what I'm thinking. I mean di dioramas right the amount of awards I'm going to win with the dioramas that I do is minimal and that does not in the slightest bother me because I'm excited about doing dioramas <laughs> you know yeah. like that's that's it and that's that's the thing you've got to find for yourself what is it that you're doing and why yeah I love it mate I love it let's do some airbrushing and make make this look like I actually am a good painter and I think um, this is the only way I'll be able to paint for overseas as well. Good. Um, because I think if I, I um, break this down, if I, um, I've sort of had some, some in-depth conversations with Ben. Shock horror. Oh, wow. Absolute shock horror <laughs> that, that Ben X. Layton and, and, and Andy Buckhart would uh, sit down and... Dive deep, deep, dive deep in the sauce bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but also some chats with Dave as well, which has been good. Because Dave offers a very unique perspective as well. He does. But, let me see if I can find it. I just sort of like to, uh, an excerpt of what I was saying to, to Dave today was that my journey will continue to cross paths with competition um, and it has to to keep going forward but how I approach that crossroad will be with all of this in mind and some of the things we've spoken about here uh, loosely. So that's a good way to sort of sum up the competition stuff. Ah. <sighs> You're a good and kind man, Andrew. I don't say that to you enough, mate. I, I am at this point in my life. I wasn't as a young, 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 young man. You know, before I was probably sort of 17, 18, I was not a good person at all. Um, but I have done everything I can to become a good person and continue to try. So that is all I am. I don't know too many men that could say that they were good people when they were younger. Yeah. Or and, and maybe I should rephrase that. I don't know too many people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not it's not a man or a woman thing. It's just a it's just life, mate. It's just just life. So you say mini man so that one of the biggest goals with your painting is to paint things that better painters and artists I look up to think are cool. And you got a lot of that done this year. That's good, mate. I agree with that. You did. You did some stuff that I thought was cool. And I know you look up to me. I know I'm an inspiration of yours. Over and I said, I find mindless terrain building as enjoyable as intense painting, but they thefts tick different boxes in the brain yeah for sure i think mindless like one is obviously in the system one part of your brain and one is in system two right system one being that part of the brain that you know you can switch off you might already know this so apologies if you do but you know one being that area that you can kind of just shut off and do things on you know autopilot quotation marks and then the other being uh where you need to be thinking about conscious decision making. That's what we call the four stages of competence, mate. But yes. Yes. I don't know that it is actually. Well, what you're talking about is. You, you uh, they, they correlate. I think you've got that right. They correlate. But I think in, in that instance where it's just the difference between. You have a, a screenshot of Deno saying level up on my off bus, so that's that's um look, that's very cute. <laughs> Lots of people like to take excerpts of Deno. Cujo is one of them. Um, we were talking about how good his uh, his Deno excerpt, uh, his his uh, intro on that video is. That makes me laugh very very much every time I like if I need a chuckle. I go and watch that because the editing is just, just it just gets me. Like, hey, it's 47 Cooch. seconds of, of pure joy for me. <laughs> hey, Cooch. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Let's talk a little bit of Crimson. Um, Let's do it. All right, I've got something I'd like to challenge you on. Okay, hit me. So you've been talking about Crimson for Masters. Uh, being the most harshly judged um, painting event in Australia. Yes. Why and why are you choosing to use the word harm? Harsh? Yeah. Okay, good question. Um, so, harsh uh, does not necessarily mean unfair. Harsh uh, just means, uh, if I was to look up the dictionary, I would say, 
harsh probably means something along the lines of maybe it does actually mean unfair but I don't mean it in that context uh, harsh I would think means disproportionate to the situation um, what 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 I've always tried to do in my feedback as you would know is cater the feedback to the level of the person who is receiving it yeah um, you know so there's no value in me turning around and absolutely spraying you know a, a newer painter and saying you shit ass you fucking blah 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 that's not going to provide them any value um, and it's not going to provide uh, me a sense of uh, you know being of, of benefit to them so the reason I use the term harsh is I think that we, we, we are saying to these people there is nothing that will be off the table everything yeah. that we consider to be a downside a negative we will not hold yeah. back there will not yeah. be a well I can see what you were trying to do so I'm going to give you points for effort it is going to be purely and simply this is absolutely everything that you should be considering and why now I'm not on the judging panel which is good because I probably can't give that level of feedback to some of these people um, because they're significantly better than me but fortunately we've got Dave Will and Kyle who probably are capable of providing that level of feedback so well yeah I, I think you're right I think I think the terminology harsh suggests like crude or mean as well right like harsh in Australian language is like that's a bit harsh right you know what I mean yeah, it's, yeah. it's an interesting word um, I, I think everything you said there is is what the, the competition level could be it should be the highest level of, of criticism but I think what we have to do now I was actually having a discussion with Jared um, about this last night um, we have now had pieces that have been judged here that have also been judged in Europe and they have in in masters level competition in Europe and they have done better there than they did here now that's totally okay right like that's perspectives and that's um that's uh mm -hmm. people have difference of opinion and that's totally fine that's that's the sort of object nature right or the subject nature of of, of art um, but we we I guess in a way have benchmarks like we and I think something that we have done as Australians is that we have potentially and I mean this as as sincere as possible to our, all of our painting brethren around the world um, we potentially because we are so far away maybe put stuff on a bit more of a pedestal than we need to mm -hmm. what do you think about that uh, so we've obviously got Jared and myself as the, as the two most recent attendees of international events um, both of us delivering a reasonable result at the two events uh, in the Masters category so I think um, the what, what I take away from an event such as Amonti or what I did take away and I'd be interested in Jared's perspective um, is that we are a long way away Sea of Froths we are a long way away in distance but we are also a long way yeah, away right. from the quality of work that we see at international events now I say that as a wider community not as an individual observation you know there's mm -hmm. there's individuals that have uh, delivered great results um, within our community but our overall aggregate and average is probably lower than the standard that you would see at an international yeah, event but that might just be because we just don't have as many as well right yeah uh, so I guess what I, what I want people to walk into masters is knowing that that, that it is going to be as uh, high a standard as we can deliver from a judging perspective. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, we're not going to have 
gold, silvers, bronzes or anything like that. It just means that be prepared for your work to be judged to the highest possible caliber. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, you can you can even say that Natalia was probably judging that way last year's. Well, I think most of us were. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but uh, we tried to cater that level of uh, aggression, if you will, to yeah. specific people at the event and yeah. what what we're basically saying and delineating is that that level of uh of harshness will be what everyone in masters receives there won't yeah. be many people in standard that get that level of feedback or, yes. or level of aggression how did it go jared did it work mate I, um, I think what we should do is we should, for fun, because we've not done this, uh, we should bring Jared on for one of our streams in the lead up um, to uh, Crimson and have him talk about his experiences overseas. We really should. Awesome. We should. Yeah. Jared, would you, be, would you be down to come on for a chat? Would you be down to clown? With the biggest clowns OCE? Oh yeah. The down to clown. Cool. Uh, mate, there is no there is no level of silly that is not um, that is not appreciated on this stream. Um, and could you do anything more silly than that handshake anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. We love you, Jared. We love you, but it's not quite time to let that one die. That one wasn't. Well, that one won't die for years, mate. That one's got Team America vibes. I will never die. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Give me a home among the gum trees with lots of plum trees. A sheep or two and a kangaroo. Got lows line out the back, veranda out the front, and an old rocking chair. Been around the world a couple of times or maybe more. Seen the sights, I've had delights on every foreign shore. Yeah, so I've, I've said for quite a while that our best are at the level of, of the world's best, but you don't go to an event in Australia and see a thousand models at that level, no. <laughs> whereas that's what you do in Europe. And it is, it is a staggering thing to witness um, yeah. when you aren't used to that. Yeah. Um, overwhelming. In the video, you, mm. uh, you said, or what did you say? You said if you are in the medals, if you have been in the medals, you have to enter masters. No, I didn't right? say have to. No? Oh, you said you could. Yep, right? you should. You should. Yeah. Um, however, if you've won gold medals, you have to, correct? No. There is no, there is no, uh, we will not be forcing anyone. Okay. The decision for which category a person enters is entirely up to them. Now, I will absolutely be giving some very not subtle sledging if someone should be entering Masters and they don't, much as I did to our good friend Jared in the last six months or so. Yeah. Um, but no, there's, there's, I think there's a, I think there's a good reason for us to not take that decision away from people. We, we, we've, we've opened up masters and standard in general 
to give people in the community a chance to, you know. Yeah. So I don't want to take that away. Yeah, cool. This is why you see fun. Uh, one thing I'm hearing is a lot, there's a lot of, there's a groundswell right now for Crimson. Have you been paying attention to it? No. Or have you, you've been a little bit too sick for that nonsense? Uh, no, I, well, I try not to, I try not to take too much notice, mate. Um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people who like to talk a good game. Um, I don't care about talk. I care about actions. Yes. And so I want to see people fronting up and buying tickets. When people front up and buy tickets, that's when I'll that's when I'll take a little bit more notice. Alrighty. That's a, that sounds like a call to action right there. For anyone who's in the stream and who's thinking about going to the or is like, I'm definitely going. Ticket time. <laughs> Wasn't intended to be a call to action. Um, it was just a... <laughs> it's just a cup one. <laughs> fair enough. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's some pretty awesome little things going on along the side. Uh, Yeah, we've got some. This year, we've got some great stuff. I can't got, wait for that. We've got T-shirts this year. We've also got um, uh, also got mugs, which we're going to show off very soon, or painting mugs actually, which is going to be great. Yeah, we've got a. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. There will be uh, there'll be cookies for all entrants. Love the cookies last year. Vegan cookies. Yeah, everybody cookies. Gluten free, vegan, just whatever you want. Yeah, we try to try to take care of as, as many. Um, oh, Dano, you knew that was going to happen. You did anyway. Care. We do. No, it'll be it'll be a really good year. Um, oh, the shirt guys are yeah. I don't really care um, about the shirt guy. Whatever, it's just a shirt, mate. Whoever's doing that. Congratulations, you make shirts. Well done. <laughs> Look, I heard along the, along the grapevine where it's the dude, the, the first name starts with T and then it's followed by Inbo. Um, so if anyone knows of this, this champion, pass on a thank you from, from Andy. Sincerely. Uh, my size is an extra large when I'm in good shape and a 2x when I'm not. So being that it's after Christmas, you can guarantee we're all a little bit more stout, uh, a little bit more portly, maybe even a little bit more porch. Come on, you gotta give me three fantastic words there, don't I? Uh, portly. You, you were impressed with that. I saw the rice smile come up off those three words. You portly like, and paunch, uh, get, you get some, get some points for those. Well played. Yeah. See, I, I think, uh, we should probably do a Hawaiian shirt in all honesty at some point. Maybe, maybe one year. Uh, maybe we need to do like a, yeah, like a, like a topical Hawaiian style shirt. Then I want a surfboard, giving Nolsey a, giving Nolsey a, a noogie. You couldn't do that anymore, Nolsey would smash up, have you seen him? He's yeah. huge now. He's, he's jacked, we've lost him. He's buff, we've, he's buff Nolsey. We've lost him too. Oh, by the way, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you a funny story. I can't do it on the stream, but, um, but yeah, I'll tell you a funny story later. Look at this, <laughs> look at this. The lovely Georgia just, just gives me a full container of Rocky Road. I'm living in the wrong house. Well, you know you are. But the guest room's up and running now, mate. So, come, um, come arc season. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Hope I can anyway, afford it. Anyway, you have a story to tell us. Yeah, no, I'll tell you after. It's not a story I can oh, share with oh, the stream. It's, it's not an appropriate story yeah. for the What do you think of, what do you think of this? Hasn't this just sort of just materialized out of nowhere? It was pretty quick too, yeah. It started it yesterday. Yeah, four hours. Yeah. Put four more in. I'm going to talk to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a... I'm just... I'm a wizard sometimes. Mm. 
when you're not thinking and you're just doing yeah when I'm just painting that's that's when my best stuff comes out generally oh mate look I've been around with Trent now for quite a while doing this so <laughs> I know he's uh, I know where his, uh, his shadow points are I just go in for the kill every now and again as I think he does to me so we just have fun we, we, we have good times we have good we dance. Have fun. We have a good time. We're good. We're good acquaintances. Yeah. The very best acquaintances. Uh, does everyone want to say hi to Meadow? Meadow is my friend's dog that I'm dog sitting at the moment. Meadow, hey, come here. Come here, sweetie. She's a bit of a big girl, aren't you, Meadow? Oh, sleepy girl. Oh, look at her. Oh, Yana. Come and have a look at this dog. <laughs> oh, you're a sweet girl. Oh, around here. All the way around. Right here. Oh, who's that? Come here. Come around, you'll see it better. Hi, Jub. Down, down. What are you doing? Ah, he's got ya. <laughs> uh, this you is. Well come on now, say hello. This is this is Meadow, Jub. This is Meadow. Oh, I love. And also it. the whole stream. So say hello. Oh, hi everybody. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm dog. Oh, she's so beautiful. Yeah, she's ten months. I'm dog sitting for at the moment. She's a Boston. And she's not the smartest dog I've ever known, but... She's, she's 10 months old, she's in Boston, and she's not smart. <laughs> oh, she's but perfect. She is, yeah, she is cute. But she's, she's very sweet. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Yeah. Uh, you would have seen... Yeah. You were, you seen a picture of her yesterday on Hugo's stream. On Hugo's Instagram. Yeah? Yeah. Hugo, what a guy. What a guy. Thanks, Meadow, for the nice cuddle. You can go back down now. Uh, we are going to finish up very shortly, friends. G'day, Bear Cave. Uh, so I can take this little dingbat outside and uh, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to going to do a little little matte varnish. Sweetabix, bonjour. Bonjour. Hi, Bear. I've seen the sights I've had, delights on every foreign shore. Uh, it's good times, mate. It's good times. I I love Crimson Season. I really do. I do too. Um, you know what? Because it kind of rolls off just a good time of year anyway, right? And then yep. it's, the party's not over. Yeah. You know, you have a, a, a good Christmas and New Year doing whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's playing playing some board games with some friends or, you know, just chopping it up. Chopping up some friends, chopping up some others, or, you know, just <laughs> chopping up a turkey or... <laughs> Or a ham. Just, just chop it up. Just chop it up. <laughs> but uh, you know, sometimes you get the uh, the blues after a time like that. A lot of people do, right? You know, they get a bit of a come down. But not us, not us crimson goers, because we we have the the best time of the year right around the corner. So it feels really nice to be contributing something to a to a wider community. Like it feels like a really good thing. It does, doesn't it? To to know that I'm doing something for other people with very little personal gain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as dumb as that sounds. Like I, I I like the fact that I do something for other people. Jolly old Saint Denno. <laughs> I think I think that's a shared feeling for all of us, right? Um, I definitely know that's how Benny feels, Storm feels. Because I'm not, I'm not good at caring about other people, as you well know. Um, Look, maybe not good is not your term. It's just, you know, not your term. It's just, you know, you're unique in your approach. To yeah. Let's start now. Yeah. Not good at it. But it does feel, fill me with a sense of satisfaction that I can contribute to making other people's lives 
better to some extent. What what I love is uh, is now a lot a lot of people who are attending. Um, it's not their first time, so there's a whole group of people who are like, I can't wait to see my friends. And that group of people as a whole is like, I can't wait to meet new people, right? Could you ask for, for anything more? Well, the, the, the ultimate goal, mate, and, and hopefully one that we've achieved, is that all of those people went away last year and said to their friends, you've got to come to this, it's so much fun. And we get, yeah. we get to, you know, that wider group um, of people, so... Alright, look at this. This is what I've done. Um, feels okay, actually. I'm going to add some grass tufts and then we might go in and start doing some cool highlighting, but it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. For four hours of work, I am well pleased. So I think we'll, we'll aim for about five to six once we've uh, once we've tweaked all the little bits and pieces. Nice. Uh, going on as a uh, as a little bit of a display at uh, at Crimson as well, yes. Mm, probably not. Probably not. Why not? Well, I I carry a lot of stuff down, mate. I'll maybe just focus uh, on that. That's a very fair. <laughs> maybe just focus on the stuff that we need for the weekend and not show off yes, my yes. own stuff. <laughs> all right. I'm not. Uh, I'm hoping that we over the, the next few years, as we establish more and more years under our belt, we can do galleries of, of miniatures past, you know, from the event. I think that'll be a lot of fun. To They're all about. up on Facebook already. The galleries yeah, for the last four yeah, years. Yeah, and I people like to see stuff in the flesh. Interesting. I mean, I mean, if you could, right? I'd love to be able to look one more time at Dappled Light Cormac. I'm sure you would too. I would. I would. Uh, let's go see who's streaming tonight. If there's anyone that we can raid into. Mm. My whole my whole thing is empty. Anyone who we would normally go visit would. Dingo's hobby chat. Iron Ant. Foolish monk. Esmeralda's on. Yeah, es like to, Esmeralda's I mean, nice. Again, give her a raid. Brush, well, who's Brush Licker? I'm not sure. Uh, what's es what's Esmeralda doing? doing? She's a lovely person. She's very kind. She's painting. Let's go raid her. She's a kind, kind person. Uh, Been a pleasure, friends. It has, it has. It was good to see you tonight, mate. Uh, no problem. We will. Uh, we'll be, we'll back. be back next Sunday. Well, yeah, I'll be back Sunday, uh, and Bucks will be back next Monday. We'll get some shit done. Uh, looking and forward to might, it. We might have Jared uh, JC Paints with us. Indeed. Hopefully next week. Indeed. All right, friends. Big Dano out.